Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1 Tutorial 23A. This is the first of three tutorials focused on accounting for internally generated intangible assets. This tutorial will review recognition of internally generated intangible assets, whereas tutorials 23B and 23C will review accounting for impairment of internally generated intangible assets under ASPE and IFRS respectively. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. First, to review the definitions for the research and design phases for internally generated intangible assets. Second, to review the six criteria that must be met to capitalize design phase costs under ASPE and IFRS. And third, to determine the capitalized and expensed costs for internally generated intangible assets under both ASPE and IFRS. Before we proceed with our example on recognition of internally generated intangible assets, we'll just briefly review the two phases and the associated criteria. The first of the two phases is the research phase. And in this phase, all planned investigation activities, including evaluating and selecting products or processes from a number of possible alternatives. If there's any uncertainty about which phase is appropriate for a specific activity or cost, then the research phase is the default. The accounting treatment for research phase costs under both ASPE and IFRS is that all costs are expenses incurred, and that's because the activities do not relate to an identifiable product or process. The other phase is the development phase. So in this phase, we're talking about the application of research findings before commercial production begins. So research is very early on, and then typically when the research moves along to something that's potentially viable, we end up in the development phase. So here we're talking about designing, testing, prototyping, building plants from alternatives that were identified in the research phase. Any costs for new tools, templates, castings, or any of those kinds of things are considered development costs. The accounting treatment for development costs first relies on the meeting of six key criteria that all must be met in order to be capitalized. If those six criteria are not met, then they are expensed as incurred. So under IFRS, you must capitalize all of the development costs. ASPE, however, gives a choice to capitalize or expense, even if all the criteria are met. So now we will review the six development cost capitalization criteria. And again, all of these must be met for cost to be considered a development cost and to be capitalized. So the first is that technical feasibility has to be proven. It has to be technically viable product. It can't be something that is uh, nowhere near commercialization or feasibility. Management intention exists to complete the product and use it for sale. It must be able or to be used or to sell. There are adequate resources that exist to complete it. So if the company uh, is unable to, to gather uh, or acquire the appropriate resources, it cannot be capitalized. The probability of future economic benefits are clearly established and reasonably certain since the existence of a market or the usefulness of the intangible asset has to be present. And finally, costs can be reliably measured. So all of these must be met in order for the cost to be considered a development cost. So we will now proceed with our example. This tutorial is based on the Romulus Pharmaceuticals A problem. So please make sure that you download the correct file that contains the data and requirements for pharmace Romulus Pharmaceuticals A. There's only one requirement for this tutorial, and that will be to determine the amounts to be capitalized on the balance sheet as at December 31st, 2020, and the amounts to be expensed on the income statement for the year ended December 31st, 2020. This is important. We're going to assume that all six capitalization criteria for internally developed intangible assets under ASPE and IFRS are satisfied and that they're satisfied as of January 2nd. So basically at the beginning. And also we'll assume that if the company reported under ASPE, then it would choose to capitalize the development costs. So this prevents us from having a problem in deciding whether or not under ASPE the cost should be capitalized or um, or expensed. We'll just go ahead and capitalize them since the criteria are met. So what we will do now is go through each of the costs identified in the problem and basically determine if it's to be capitalized or if it's to be expensed. The first uh, expenditure uh, is the rental of specialized research lab equipment. Since can, that can be directly attributed to the development of TDP, we will then allocate all of that cost to TDP and therefore it will be capitalized. The next expenditure is the purchase of raw materials and chemicals for testing and development. 
of TDP. So since it's specific to the development of the drug, then that will be capitalized. So we have 82,000 capitalized in addition to the rental costs of 146,000. The third expenditure includes materials, labor, and overhead for lab equipment, all for development activities. And just to kick this up a little bit, uh, we're saying that only 60% is dedicated to the development of TDP. So that would mean that the remaining 40% would be for uh, other development or other activities not related. And so what we'll do here is then we'll take 60% of the total $115,000 in expenditures and capitalize that. So 69,000 is capitalized and the remaining 40% or 46,000 will be expensed. The fourth expenditure are salaries of product development staff and they're all directly dedicated to TDP. So that's $315,000 all capitalized. We also have some allocated administrative costs, including executive salaries. So these are allocated, which means that they are a portion of other costs that are incurred and allocated elsewhere. So all of the allocated costs, we could say, are attributed to this particular department. However, allocated administrative costs are not capitalized. They are expensed. Then we have TDB design, prototyping, and testing. So this falls right into the definition of development cost. So 52000 is capitalized. Then there is the purchase of lab monkeys that are used in the testing of TDP, again specifically as part of testing for the drug, so 10,000 capitalized. And of course we'll presume that after the, the drug goes to market that the monkeys are released back into the wild. Then we have legal fees for patent development. Since they are specifically related to developing the patent for this particular product, those will be capitalized as well, so $67,000 capitalized. Market research for TDB feasibility. Even though for costs to be considered development costs and capitalized, they must be technically feasible, the actual research to determine the, the feasibility is not a capitalizable cost. So even though the company incurs costs to conduct some market research, those are expense. So 32000 expensed. Then the company incurs some costs for incentives for doctors to recruit patients for clinical trials. The drugs have to be tested, but those, uh, those costs, those promotion costs, are actually not related to the development of the product, and so they must be expensed, so 17000 expensed. And then finally, external consulting fees related to TDB formula development. So because these are specific costs associated with the development of the TDB drug, even though they're external consulting fees, so sometimes the, the companies will use outside professionals for assistance. So those costs can be attributed to the development and therefore the $28,000 will be capitalized. So when all is said and done, we've gone through all of the expenditures identified in the problem. And so what we have then are total capitalized costs of $769,000 and total expense costs of $170,000. And just to make sure that we captured them all, they total $939,000. So that means that we have correctly captured all of the costs identified in the problem and just simply allocated them between being capitalized or expensed. Now what we can do is show what a simplified journal entry for these would look like. Of course, these costs would be incurred over the year. So rather than have who knows how many journal entries to record them, this uh, entry here just summarizes them all. So we would debit the patent for all the capitalized costs of 769,000. And then all of the remaining costs that were expensed, so the material, labor and overhead expense for 46,000, administrative expenses, debit 75,000, market research expenses, debit 32,000, and promotion and incentives expenses, debit 17,000, and the credit can consist of cash, accounts payable, wages payable, or whatever, to the tune of 939,000 credit, the journal entry balances. So now we can see what a partial balance sheet would look like for Romulus Pharmaceuticals as of December 31st. We have non-current assets, a subcategory for intangible assets, which may include more than the patent, but in this section we would see the patent capitalized for $769,000, so that becomes the capitalizable cost, and there we have it. So now for some key points to remember. The development of internally generated intangible assets is separated into two key phases, the research phase and the development phase. In the research phase, costs are expensed as incurred, whereas in the development phase, costs can be capitalized only if all six development criteria are met. So make sure that you review those criteria. ASPE does allow for the choice of expensing or capitalize even if the six criteria are met.
This concludes tutorial 23A on recognition of internally generated uh, intangible assets. You should now proceed to review tutorials 23B and 23C for accounting for impairment of internally generated intangible assets under ASPE and IFRS.